Previously on World History and Geography, China's earliest civilizations arose by the Yangtze and Huanghe rivers and spawned the line of dynasties that would rule China until the 20th century. The Chang were the first dynasty to leave written records using China's system of writing with thousands of different characters. During the Zhou dynasty, local rulers reported to the king, who had ultimate power. By the later years of the Zhou dynasty, the lords began to think of themselves as independent kings, causing constant conflict between them for wealth and territory. The period was referred to as the Warring States period and led to the decline of the Zhou dynasty. And now, our feature presentation. During the Warring States period, China moved away from their ancient values of social order, harmony, and respect for authority. So Chinese scholars and philosophers developed different solutions on how to restore these ancient values. The most influential of the Chinese philosophers was Confucius. Kongzi. Confucius was born in 551 BCE during a time of crisis and violence. He believed that social order and good government could be restored if society were organized into and followed the rules for five basic relationships. Ruler and subject. Father and son, husband and wife, older brother and younger brother, friend and friend. A code of proper conduct regulated each of these relationships. For example, rulers should practice kindness and virtuous living. In return, subjects should be loyal and law-abiding. As you can tell, three of Confucius's five relationships were based upon the family. Confucius stressed that children should practice filial piety or respect for their parents and ancestors. Confucius also said that education could transform a humbly born person into a gentleman. This laid the groundwork for the creation of a bureaucracy in China. A bureaucracy is a trained civil service, or people who run the government. Education became critically important to career advancement in the bureaucracy. The teachings of Confucius were collected into a book called The Analects. Confucianism was never a religion, but an ethical system based on accepted principles of right and wrong, which spread beyond China. Lo Tzu, Lao Tzu who probably lived during the 6th century BCE, believed that only the natural order was important in restoring order. And finally, the most important book of all, the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. In Lao Tzu's book, Tao Te Ching, or The Way of Virtue, he said that a universal force Use the force, Luke. No, not that force. A force called the Tao, meaning the way, guided all things, and only humans failed to follow the Tao. The Tao is not God and is not worshipped. Taoism includes many deities that are worshipped in Taoist temples. These deities are part of the universe and depend, like everything, on the Tao. Lo Tzu's philosophy came to be known as Taoism, or Taoism. This understanding of nature led Taoists to pursue scientific study. In contrast to Confucius and Lo Tzu, a group called the Legalists believed that highly efficient and powerful government was the key to restoring order in society. They got their name from the belief that government should use the law to end civil disorder and restore harmony. Amfitsi and Li Tzu were among the founders of legalism. The Legalists taught that a ruler should provide rich rewards for people who carried out their duties well, while the disobedient should be harshly punished. The problem was, in practice, the legalists stressed punishment more than rewards. People with little interest in the philosophical debates of the Confucians, Taoists, and legalists found answers to life's questions elsewhere. Some consulted a book of oracles called the I Ching, or I Ching, to solve ethical or practical problems. Readers used the book by throwing a set of coins, sort of like rolling dice, then interpreting the results, and then reading the appropriate oracle or prediction. The I Ching, the Book of Changes, helped people to lead a happy life by offering good advice and simple common sense. Other people turned to the ideas of ancient thinkers, like the concept of yin and yang, two powers that together represented the natural rhythms of life. Yin represents all that is cold, dark, soft, and mysterious. Yang is the opposite, warm, bright, hard, and clear. As you can see, the symbol of yin and yang is a circle divided into two halves. The circle represents the harmony of yin and yang. Both forces represent the rhythm of the universe and complement each other. Both the I Ching and yin and yang help Chinese people understand how they fit into the world in the same way a daily horoscope or a magic eight ball might help others. In the third century BCE, the Qin Dynasty, or Qin Dynasty, replaced the Zhou, and the ruler who founded the Qin Dynasty employed legalist ideas to subdue the warring states and unify China. The Qin ruler assumed the name Shi Huangdi, which means first emperor. Shi Huangdi's armies, with the advantage of the crossbow, conquered the other kingdoms, unifying China and expanding its borders, doubling China's size. In fact, the name China comes from the Qin. Zhongguo. Under his rule, Shi Huangdi replaced the old coins with round copper coins. He built a highway network of more than 4,000 miles which helped trade and set common standards throughout China for writing, law, and weights and measures to help unify the people. Major irrigation projects increased the farm production. 
Even with these advances, the Qin dynasty was unpopular. Scholars hated Shi Huangdi for burning books, not supporting legalist ideas. Poor people hated him because he forced them to work on the building and expansion of a huge defensive wall to discourage attacks from the northern nomads. That's one great wall! The Great Wall of China arose on the backs of hundreds of thousands of peasants. The wall builders worked neither for wages nor the love of the empire. They faced a terrible choice, work on the wall or die. Many of the laborers worked on the wall and died anyway, victims of the crushing labor or the harsh winter weather. Emperor Shi Huangdi had established an autocracy, a government that has unlimited power and uses it in a willy-nilly or inconsistent or arbitrary manner. You know what I mean. Some autocrats exist today. When Shi Huangdi died, he was buried in a massive tomb, which remains unexcavated, in a complex that includes its own terracotta army. Altogether, over 7,000 clay soldiers, each with unique facial expressions and position according to rank, have been unearthed. And though largely gray today, patches of paint hint at once brightly colored clothes. Further excavations have revealed horses, chariots, swords, arrow tips, and other weapons, many in pristine condition. Bing Ma Yong. But the Qin dynasty lasted only a short time. Although as cruel as his father, Shi Huangdi's son proved less able. Peasants rebelled just three years after the second Qin emperor took office. One of the rebel leaders, a peasant from the land of Han, marched his troops into the capital city. By 202 BC, the harsh Qin dynasty gave way to the Han dynasty, one of the longest in Chinese history. That's one great war!